Hey, it's Jeff Roberts out here at Terra Texas. After Battery Day, we have to rename it Terra Texas, but we are at Giga Texas according to the paperwork. And it is a beautiful Sunday. We're gonna try another Sunday fun day uh, construction Disneyland episode. Again, I don't know if I'll do these every week or not, but here comes another one. And uh, so as my buddy and fellow Quad Squad member says, Joe Tetmeyer, let's go fly! Woohoo! <laughs> oh man, I'm so corny. Okay, so first order of business, let's uh, take a look at the front northwest pond. And it is, well, I'm gonna call it more of a puddle. Let's get a little sky in here. Yeah, this thing is definitely almost completely gone. And I think we're gonna stay outside today just cause uh, I feel like it and it's not too windy. So hopefully the wind isn't too bad. I'll turn my back to the wind. But yeah, here's the, uh, the puddle. There's not much happening here. It looks like maybe it just rained a little bit. I mean, it didn't rain, but let's just say it looks like it's just the effect of a little bit of rain overnight. Even though it did not rain, this is just the last remaining remnants of the swamp that was on the northwest uh, corner of the building here. And so now that this is going to be pretty much gone, we will be able to see this corner of the building, the last remaining corner that has not taken shape as the uh, emerald, as some have pointed out, the emerald cut diamond. We will see this come into shape. Whoops, I'm going too high. Mm -mm. Now we did get authorization from the FAA, it sounds so official. Um, we did get off through the Lance system to fly up to 400 feet today um, because we have that new area up north that we need to get really high in order to both see some perspective on the land as well as maintain communications with the controller of the drone. So that is going to be coming up here. Very exciting. And here's something similar to the opening shot. We've all seen it 66 times, or 65 times, because I guess the first video was not a flying video. Maybe the first two videos, I don't remember. But thank you if you remember those. Thank you for consistently watching. Welcome back. And uh, let's see what we can find. Oh, and you know what another cool thing is? about it being a sparsely crude morning and it's about eight o'clock in the morning 8 10 and so the crews aren't really hitting it yet even though they do work sundays and it is sunday but we're going to take advantage of this and let's just uh let's not get into any trouble here but let us get in a little bit lower I just want to make sure nobody's around. Not because I don't want them to see me doing this, because I don't want them to feel at risk of something falling on their head, even though I don't think my drone's gonna fall out of the sky. But uh, one of the things I've been wanting to do is to get really low on one of these pieces of equipment so that you can see the scale, because from the air, it's really impossible to see the scale of this equipment. It is just way too big and when you go up, you just kind of see it from one perspective. You don't get the three dimensions and you don't um, really get it because everything looks like ants, especially on the time lapses. Everybody looks like an ant. So we're just gonna go as low as we can go and Okay, let's just, so this, and we're still, believe it or not, we're still 30 feet in the air here. Let's see if I can get lower and closer. Nobody around, right? We're not trying to scare anybody, distract anybody, slow down progress. We certainly don't want to do that. 
Okay, so there you go. Hopefully this gives you a better idea. The little crew member sits in that cab. And look how tall this thing is. It's like a roller coaster. Let's just go up. Elevator up. Top floor, please. Yeah. That's amazing. Now we're at 130 feet. And traveling in the south direction. It's a beautiful morning. It's a little bit balmy here in central Texas. But temperature is 72 degrees. And it is a lovely morning. Not too windy again which is why I'm staying outside today, which is better for controller connection anyway, especially as we get further into the south end of the property. The controller always complains a bit at that point. And of course, we're going to keep in mind that we have the high tension wires from Austin Energy to our left or to the east. So if we are gonna wrap around to the left side, we are going to go up to at least 194 AGL, as I like to say, above ground level. Makes me feel like an official pilot to use those acronyms. All right. All right, this is the area that we think is going to be casting land, uh, as we talked about in the last video of this type. And Big casting machine goes here, or machines, and Keystone is a key player in this process with the concrete. And now, I was mistaken, it was pointed out to me by our very reliable quad squad, one of the members, that these, and let's take a close look since, again, we don't have a huge amount of crew population on site. I think I might have seen a couple people, maybe management level. Let's look at these. Now, I thought this was concrete that was poured, and I put it in the title of the video the other day, and I didn't mean for it to be clickbait at all. I never try to do that. I think that's really annoying. But this is apparently some kind of a mud mixture. Which, I mean, you know, at a certain point, what's the difference between concrete and mud and dirt and gravel and... I mean, it's all kind of comes from the same place and goes to the same place eventually, but... Uh, this is more of a mud. It's uh, like a sloshy, thicker type of uh, viscosity where it'll hold the, the rebar or the screens, you know, more securely so that when the cement does get poured into these footer areas, it's very consistent. I guess there's a lot of science that I am just not familiar with in concrete land, which is fortunate that we got in touch with one of the Keystone folks. Oh, there's a person. Uh, because now we are gonna be watching out for the Keystone pump trucks and um, in other Keystone hardware coming onto site as they become a more important key player uh, as we get closer to concrete. And look at all this rebar down here. Very, very exciting to see all of this stuff. This is just, it's like, uh, you know, a Lego land or a Lego set for adults, you know. Look at all these parts, what can we make with this? Oh, I know, a Terra factory. Exactly, precisely. So we're going to, let's, uh, since we're back here in the south, let's see how the south pond is coming. And we are flying against the wind now, so we're going to be going a little bit slower to conserve battery. And 
and here's what's going to be the south or, um, pond number one. I have to remember the official names. This is going to be pond number one, and it is no more a pond than it was last week. Not ready for prime time yet, not ready for H2O yet. All right, so that's that. Boy, it's really rare for me to fly during a time where there's really not many crew members out there, but it's kind of nice because I, I can fly lower and you know more annoyingly without bothering or distracting anybody because that's the last thing any of us quad squad members want to do. We certainly don't want to be the reason progress slows down even for a second. That is inexcusable, unforgivable, and will not happen. All right, so we are going to zip along here. And now we are traveling north. And according to Elon, this emerald cut diamond building is built facing true north. So we are truly going north. Sorry, I don't want to recycle the same uh, information from last week. But just in case you missed it, We'll fill you in from now, uh, from time to time, now and again, on this video. All right, so we are going to fly north toward Martin Marietta, and we are going to have to come back for a battery swap. And by the way, let's look at the east side here, and let's get higher than the high tension wires before I forget. So we'll take a look at the east side as we go. Here's a good indication of how much crew is on the ground. If you see all their trucks parked, they're not here. Usually you only see this after a rainy day or a rainy couple of days where they give it a break, let it dry out. But right now it's Sunday morning. It's probably before the shift really gets started. We've got maybe management level people on the ground kind of prepping their checklist for the day of things that they want to get done areas to focus on i you know i'm just speculating because i'm not a construction person but if you are maybe you can tell all of us what these guys do before the crews really get started what kind of preparations are involved we are now flying over martin marietta <clears throat> toward the promised land this really beautiful green these new green areas, these putting greens. And this is part of the new land purchase. Let me square up here. Okay, so yeah, you can see it taking shape. That familiar H, as Joe Tetmeyer pointed out. It is an H. It's a pretty solid H uh, in the shape of this acquisition. There's my max altitude, 392 feet in the air off the ground. So this is the new land that Tesla just purchased, 381 acres. Jack, an esteemed squad, quad squad member, um, was thinking about this last night in the group text and he did some more measurements just based on information and I've been using information from Joe and from um, one of my Patreon patrons. Thank you very much. You know who you are. And um, we're going to fly back now. I just got a battery warning which means it's time to go home. And so I've been going off of just kind of the information that those reliable sources have have been sharing and Jack did kind of a deep dive I guess into the public records I'm guessing Jack correct me if you're wrong I mean if I'm wrong <laughs> and um, and so here's Jack's kind of refined boundaries of this land acquisition based on his research but it's all subject to change and it's subject to change because Tesla will continue purchasing, we believe, uh, land 
in this area just to flesh out the um, you know the the uh, I don't know to f uh, there's a lot of jaggies on the land it'd be nice to square those up and maybe they have a lot of plans with regard to bringing the corporate offices here Hey, it's Joe Tetmeyer. Who knew it? You couldn't plan any better than this. We've got live Joe Tetmeyer. <laughs> hey, Joe, how's it going? Good. Good. We're uh, doing our Sunday fun day talk and fly. How so I'm you? talking and I'm flying. Okay. We're flying back right now. We just looked at the uh, the new land acquisition. Okay. And I was just talking about Jack's uh, analysis last night in the group text that he came up with closer to 390 feet when he did all the measurements. And I don't know if he was basing that on public records or what, but maybe you can help me understand where, where this information is located right now as far as you know this land acquisition well um, I don't know I was basing a lot of it on what uh, Jack's findings were except the fact that uh, what Jack had originally estimated on was right over a school and some other stuff which I don't think Tesla purchased no no I don't so think. I looked at uh, the rest of the land and uh, what made the most sense for up, what was up there, what, what was available and, and so forth. And the difference between what Jack's uh, 390 and the 381 is about 2.8%. So I think there's a little bit of room for slight slop. And you know, for example, Giga Texas, they said it was 2,100 acres, but it's not exactly originally. It was a couple of percent different. So I think there's always a little room for, for uh, for that so that's where it came from mostly just making sense and as I was driving up today I was thinking uh, in addition to uh, that land which they just purchased they said that they were looking for some other land to the south along 130 and what I think is it's probably on the southwest side south of what they've already got so it's kind of between 130 and some apartments and 71 and north is I think what they might be looking for interesting all right well we're coming in hot Coming in hot. There he is. Hi. <laughs> Hello, us. <laughs> and we're gonna land right here because my battery is almost dead. Is it? Yeah, we're at uh, single digits, nine okay. percent. All right, we are back in the air. And it is time to go check on some management offices. Oh, the ground is starting to look so beautiful in the morning light with the sun rising in the east. Let's go back and check on what we see back at the management offices and then we will go up to the launch pad from there to see if there's any changes with our new batch plant setup. Here are the high tension wires, 210 AGL. All the equipment. I wonder what time they're going to get started today. Usually they're uh, rolling by this time. Sun to sun. Dawn to dusk. Just a beautiful hunk of land here. Let's look down a little bit more. Less sky, more land. All right, there's the main block of construction offices, going down to 140. Let's see if we see anything new here. Any new secret mega packs coming in.
and then we've got construction offices over here and I'm still trying to figure out what we are doing over here because these are a lot of offices for just hanging out in the woods We're in the uh, the the east set of construction oh, offices. Okay. We're just discussing, you know, why are these here? What are they working on? There's not a lot going on down here that we know of yet, but this is uh, a lot of office for these trees. These trees don't need this much <laughs> management. Yeah, well, this uh, the lowest uh, trailer right there has doubled up in the last uh, 24 or 48 hours or so. Um, that what I'm wondering is if, since the Keystone container is right there, if that may be Keystone offices, and then the other ones are Yates offices because they have their blank, their name on the on the side of the of the ones up here to the little bit north, and then the bigger ones closer to here, I think, are Ranger. Yeah, I think I think yeah, those have been here since Ranger, and these are new and. You're right, I think they do correlate timing-wise with the Keystone containers coming in, and that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, there's one thing I was thinking about trying to see today is up north to where you are, where they have the, uh, the mobile batch plant parts mm -hmm. waiting there. Yes. There's a trailer that has a sign on it, and I haven't had a chance to read what that sign is. Ooh. I'd like to see what that uh, production company is. And I also found out that the company that's doing the uh, GeoPiers is Peterson Company. Peterson, okay. Joe is our resident deep diver, <laughs> finding all details. You'll see this trailer here has got a brand on it, right over here. It's got some sort of sign on the side. I think it's kind of reddish, if I remember the... Video. Let's see if we can do a temporary zoom in. Oops. Right there. What does that say? Yeah, it's, uh, let's see, we can probably get a little closer since there are no humans around. Well, we'll have to do a post yeah. look at that. And let's go this back. It's like touring Giga Texas by looking for brands. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> All right, continuing on. Let's get some altitude so we don't run into any innocent trees. And we've got the Martin Marietta cement mixers queued up and ready for action. And the interesting thing in that recent article is not only did they say that Martin Marietta is supporting the concrete, which is what we kind of already knew, but that the main factory, the one that you're coming up on, is going to be moved at some point. And I don't know if that means in the nearer term or they're going to use that along with the mobile batch plant to do the concrete until it gets to a certain stage and then they move it or, or what. And the other thing that was a little confusing or interesting is it said that that plant would be moved elsewhere on the property. And I don't know what that means. Hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. But I was looking at your video yesterday uh, up to the north, the new land. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that struck me is quite a bit of it's already very flat. A lot of sections that uh, would be easy to build on. And then there's uh, one area that you have two flat, large you know, areas. And between them is kind of a, a pond, marshy kind of thing, which might actually be pretty to keep if you build say a headquarters or a design studio or something up in that area right well I think I think they are moving the headquarters here just I don't know that's my gut 
I think Tesla executives are already looking for places in Bee Cave, West Lake, West Hills. I've heard rumblings from realtors in those areas. Who knows? We'll find out. Yeah, well, in that article, it also said that uh, this is much, much more than just a car factory. It's going to have design studios, a, a track, uh, obviously the public places, um, research and development, battery plant, perhaps, possibly uh, maybe the cathode plant that uh, they talked about mm, at back right. in the day might be coming here because they didn't say, they just said they were going to be building one, but they didn't, they didn't say, you know, we're going to put it at Tulsa, we're going to put it anywhere. They just said we're going to build one. Right. Um, well, they have a place that they're building right now, so it might be, you know, makes sense. <laughs> right, yeah. All right, so where is this brand we are looking for, Joe? Um, well, you already looked at it at the east side. Oh, on the, okay, yeah. got it, got it, okay. Well, it looks like not much has changed up here. Got our sidewalks in. <laughs> yeah. The only thing that I was not sure about, because I didn't do a comparison, but I think in yesterday's video, down by the two uh, mobile chemical trailers there, mm -hmm. between them and the uh, uh, power poles, it looks like there's some sort of excavation right down there. And I don't know if that, I didn't look to see if that was new or not. Are you talking about this area? Directly underneath your cross hatch. Little small little. Right there? Yeah. So I don't know if that, I, I have to go back and check video. But I just noticed that on your video yesterday. And then the uh, excavating area to the left, that sort of triangular shape, there's several viewers that are thinking it may be a retention pond, a detention pond. Maybe some people think it's just a dirt uh, place that they're using for other areas around. Um, I'm not really sure. But one thing is interesting to me is if you look at all of the various places where they're doing construction, um, in the south of Harold Green, north of Harold Green, east of Harold Green, all of them are about 10 to 15 feet below the grade that the Harold Green Road is on. Mm. So if they continue that, and, and this triangle area is the same thing, if they were to continue that, that might imply that at some point when they move Harold Green or do something like that, they're going to bring all of that down so that it's all at one level. So the level that they chose, the, the level plane that, that everything is built on, maybe about 10 or 15 feet below where everything else was. And you can kind of see it even in this picture here. See how between the road and down here, mm -hmm. and even on this side over on the uh, east side and then going to the north, all that around is about 10 or 15 feet lower. And that's right. about the same elevation of that floor as everywhere else that they're building. Yeah, it looks like a pond waiting to happen, actually. That looks exactly like what that might be this it's hard to tell but right here the green area between the camera and the let's call it the pond that also is about 10 or 15 feet high it makes almost like a little dam like, like a ridge there well they've got the the wastewater treatment plants on site so they're going to get their water flowing somewhere mm. and there's our new area up there just for perspective yeah that big huge rectangular clear space would be kind of an easy place to build something. Yeah, much easier than this uh, rocky road down here. There's Martin Marietta. And I think we are gonna bring it in, man. It was a pleasure, mm -hmm. Joe, having you pop in like this. What a great and wonderful surprise. Oh. And, we, yeah, and yes, high, huh? yes, but we did get authorization up to 400 today, mm. at least in that area. Right. This is 300 and then at 200 as we get uh, closer to the 130. Yeah, the interesting thing is up to the very, very north uh, near the area, actually a little bit more west of the area that they just purchased that land. There's another airport up there that we may have to get uh, additional yeah. flight clearance. Yeah, that's the executive airport. And so far that hasn't, um, popped up uh, but you say you you've seen that pop up on uh, on once. your warnings once Early okay on I think I flew up north just I was curious that was before we knew exactly what was gonna 
go on and where things were going to be. I knew that they were building down here where the foundations are, but everything else was just a, a unknown. So I flew all the way up there and I encountered that. Wow. Yeah, I haven't seen that yet, um, but we'll see. I mean, now with more activity to the north, we're probably going to run into that more often, I would imagine. Well, if they start building on all of these places, it's going to be really hard to get coverage on it all. <laughs> I know, I know. That's, I was just thinking, you know, we're going to have to have another launch location uh, to cover this amount of land. I mean, I couldn't even make it yesterday up to the top of, the, um, of that new area because it's so far. It's almost two miles. I was going to 10,000 feet and uh, starting to run out of connection. All right, well, we are gonna, look at that beautiful Tesla. That's dirty. <laughs> All right, thanks for watching everybody. Joe, it was awesome having you show up randomly. This was not planned. But uh, a wonderful thing. Thanks for watching. If you want one of the t-shirts, I've got a few left. Orders have been flying off the shelf here, but, and it's a limited run, so I'm not gonna make this one again. So if you want one, grab it now. Otherwise, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. You know what, uh, if they do you know, construction up there and they have to do stuff with uh, ponds, maybe a Swamp Creature will make a return. I hope so. <laughs> that would be great.